my balls are different sizes. <laughs> you know, I was about to say the same thing. <laughs> Should we start with these? Yeah, absolutely. All right, so, hey guys, I'm Tom the Tech Chap. Hi guys, I'm Pete the Tech Chap. And he is my elder brother. We've been working together for a couple of years now, and he's gonna help me help you guys Talk through some of the best gifts for, should we say, the holiday season? GoPros, cameras, laptops, games consoles, speakers, everything under the sun, really. So I want to kick off with these. You've probably seen it. It's the new uh, fourth generation Amazon Echo. I know this has been quite divisive for a lot of people. I've, I've got Echoes. I've got the older, taller, sort of cylindrical ones. I, at first, I thought this looks it looks great, but then it's got the light bar yes. underneath. Yes, exactly. So this is replacing the tall cylindrical one, which I have as well. Yeah. Uh, this is about sixty pounds on Black Friday, ninety pounds normally. So it sort of replaces the Echo Plus. Like you get the Zigbee uh, hub support. It's got better speakers. Uh, it's a little bit faster as well. So when you speak to it, it responds a little bit better. I've had this in my kitchen for a few weeks now, and as you mentioned, the the pain in the ass about this is that the ring light is now on the bottom, not on the top. So if you're anywhere that you don't look down on your Echo, so if it's on a kitchen counter or above something, you can't now see the light light You up. can't tell it's activated. You can't tell it's activated, so you have to sort of double check a couple of times. I'm not a huge fan of that, but it does sound better. Right. The speakers are really good in this. On the other hand, you have this little guy. So this is the new Echo Dot. Smaller, more portable. You might want to have a few of these around your house, and it costs about 30 to 40 pounds. So. I, I kind of like this. I would have one main one in my kitchen, maybe a couple of these in the bedroom. Is that the one that's got a clock in it? Mm, yeah. Yes. <laughs> you see, to me, that's way more useful if you're sticking that you know, in your spare room or by your bed. Why doesn't like the big that? one have a clock? I don't know. Or any kind of just small display. That would be nice. But these are you know, a nice refresh, a conversation starter in terms of design, and yeah, I think quite affordable. So this is my first one. What's your... What's your first gift recommendation? Uh, my first one I think I'm going to go for is this, which is the new iPad Air 4th generation. Okay, because this just came out, right? This it, is the it refresh. Does. Yeah, it's very, very recent. So, but And this year is a big change. In the past, the sort of iPad Air has sort of um, taken the design of the lower end iPad mm. and just sort of added in a few extra features. Whereas this one is much more closely related to the iPad Pro, which comes in higher than this. Mm -hmm. It's much more expensive than this, actually. So this gets all the good things that you get with the Pro, like the, the new design, the sort of squared off design, which is really, really nice. If it wasn't for the camera module on the back, I would have a hard time telling the difference between that and the Pro. That's right. So the, so this does this is one of one area that it compromises. Uh, so it's got, uh, it doesn't have the ultra wide camera or the LiDAR sensor that you get, but I mean, arguably that that's limited use for a lot of people. So yeah. it, it's a good way to cut down on the cost of it. You don't get the ProMotion screen, so this this has a 60 hertz screen as opposed to the 120 hertz. I do notice that. Yeah, I notice it too, but I I think it's because we're used to using things with 120 hertz. Yes. If it's not something you're that familiar with, I just don't know if you'd notice if it. If we bought that for your mum or your dad, they wouldn't know the difference. No, they wouldn't care. This is, as an all around iPad for most people, this is definitely the one to go for. I think given that you're getting a much nicer design. More um, storage, double the storage of double, the base. Double the storage. Yeah, that's one of the issues. The, the base one is cheap, but it only comes with 32 gig of storage. Which is not which is future-proof. Yeah, once all. it's formatted and you've got iOS and uh, iPad OS on there, it's you 20, some 24 gigs or something or less yeah. on there. So it's not worth it. This, I think if you can stretch to it, it makes a much better I agree with overall you. purchase. I love what they've done with this. Touch ID in so, the home button. That's right. So you don't get face ID like you do with, with the camera on the Pro. You just get touch ID. Again, it's, it's just fine. it's just a bit of cost-saving thing, but but for me, I, I think it's a compromise. And as you showed in our little uh, setup here, this, it does work with the Magic Keyboard. Absolutely. And it's the cheapest iPad that does support the Magic Keyboard. The Pros do as well. I love this thing. It's so good. <laughs> it's expensive. It's a lot of money <laughs> for a keyboard. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there you go. Magnets, always with the magnets. Yeah. You get a little trackpad, you get a nice keyboard. You also get Apple uh, Gen 2 pen, uh, pencil support, which is if, if you if you want to do some drawing or some work on it. It's Such a good design. Point. Yeah, and it just charges by uh, magnetically attaching to the top there. So yeah, it's brilliant. Best tablet you can buy, hands down. Absolutely. Fantastic. So you did mention the M1, and actually as we're using it for some notes here, this is the new MacBook Air with M1. People don't get, I don't think, I don't think it's widely understood yet that this is a as big a change as, as it is. It's absolutely massive. I can't it? think the last time there's been such a revolution in the laptop market. Every year we get new Intel machines, which we talk about and we show off and it's for five, ten yeah. percent faster, slightly better graphics. Yeah. And that's fine. But this has just come out and it's sort of offering, in some cases, double double the performance of before, double the battery life together, not one or the other. Yeah. And actually even versus this pretty high spec i7 brand new XPS 13 
It's like 30% faster. It lasts 25% longer. It's cooler. It's quieter. It has a better webcam. And in some cases, it can be cheaper as well. It's phenomenal stuff. It's obviously still quite expensive. It's an Apple laptop. Uh, but I think the Air, the new MacBook Air with M1 is absolutely the laptop to go for. For students, for mum and dad, for me, I'm probably going to use this. Don't worry about app compatibility so far. Everything I've tested has worked well with this and it's actually run faster on this even than native Windows machines. Oh, that's ridiculous, that's which amazing. Is, which is because it's just even through translation, Rosetta yeah, through stuff. emulation or whatever it is, yeah. Yeah, it, it couldn't be simpler. If you want to buy a new laptop and you're happy with, to go with a Mac and you have, I don't know, a thousand pounds to spend, 100% go with the MacBook Air, which I do appreciate is quite a high-end gift. <laughs> 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 Maybe stretches the word gift a little bit, but I just want to bring that in. Okay then, so what's your next pick? Well, I want to go again because I want to talk about this guy. It's the GoPro Hero 9 Black. Uh, this is the Hero 8 Black, so you can see a quick side by side. And the big upgrades this year, as you can see, we actually have a front screen. So it works okay. as a viewfinder, which is the most useful thing in the entire world, especially if you want to use this for vlogging or you just want to you know, set up the scene or even you're taking a picture or video of someone else, they can see themselves compared to the 8, which just tells you, you know, if it's recording and how long you have left. Real, real upgrade. Also, battery life lasts about a third longer than the 8, even with the screen. Okay, well, that's, yeah, that's Which is huge. So 30% longer, much better front screen, better stabilization and low light. Have you been on any adventures this year, really? No. I barely left the house this year. <laughs> or the cupboard under the stairs where I work. Where I Tom. keep you. <laughs> it's true. I don't know. I probably wouldn't have needed to buy a GoPro this year. But at the same time, even though we're under sort of, you know, restrictions and traveling is difficult... I've still found that this has been quite fun to go around just hiking and walks and just exploring my local area. So yeah, I think it's about four hundred pounds, about four twenty. Uh, I'm on Black Friday. It's about three eighty. So still kind of expensive, but not a MacBook. On the scale of uh, some of the gifts here, it's um, sort of mid range. Mid, isn't mid, it? <laughs> mid range. But I think this would be a great gift for someone, especially if you want to think of twenty twenty one as just sort of a, a new year, new adventures, new explorations, and you want front screen with a bigger battery. All right, so that's GoPro for me. Pete, what's your next one? Um, I think I'm gonna go with this, which is a fairly obvious gift choice idea. The yeah, Nintendo that's not Switch. new, is it? It's, no, it is not new. <laughs> no, this, uh, this, the Switch, I think, and this is an original one, actually. I think this came out in, let's see if I can turn the screen on here. 2017? 2017, yeah. Three so years. It's... 2020 gift guide. The best from 2017. 2017. But there's nothing else like it yet. No. This is still, I mean, nobody does what Nintendo does or as well as they do when it comes to a certain kind of game. Family friendly, multiplayer, sort of co-op split screen. Given it's three years old, we've actually got a decent library of games. Yeah, yeah. And there's absolutely loads for everyone. And um, you can actually buy these, unlike most That's of right, these. these actually are available. <laughs> now there is obviously a Switch Lite as well. Which is newer. Which is newer. So, slightly, yeah. Yeah, so which is newer. It's a little bit smaller, it's more portable, and mm. it's just, it's ideal for people who are just playing on the go or don't have access to a TV. Personally, I wouldn't really want to give that up because... I wouldn't either. The whole uh, point of this is removable control cons. Yeah. Or also plugging into a TV. Plug, plug into the, the, multiplayer. That's right, the dock. Yeah, I want to switch that switches. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, get, I totally get that. C call me old-fashioned. <laughs> um, uh, my three-year-old little boy loves playing Mario Kart on this. As much as the console is, I think, fairly reasonably priced, um, the games are, are often very expensive. If they're new, they they can charge a, a lot for them, and they do. I think expensive games is the order of the day, especially when we come to these consoles. Yeah. Should we bring in the PS5? We actually have one, which is quite <laughs> impressive for a start. We've also got the Series X there. There's a Series S lurking somewhere else. £65 for NBA. That was a horrible 65, noise. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> this, obviously, yeah, you guys will know this. This is probably the hottest gift yeah it, it, it is yeah, i think so i think probably ps5 more than the xbox there's merits for both we love both and it's all i think down to what games you play in terms of exclusives and also what your friends play. yeah what consoles your friends got because well. if everyone's playing online on the ps5 and you've got an xbox then you're billy no mate yeah really the one thing i was thinking that's really impressive about this is that as a console generation this is the biggest leap i think since I've been playing games. Since PS2, I'd say. Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's huge. This is this is high-end PC stuff, you know, yeah. reasonably high-end PC, PC stuff. I agree, and it's not just uh, the boring stuff like hard tech hardware, it's the controller as well. So this is the DualSense, and what do you think of the triggers? I think they're amazing. I, I, think, I think this is the standout bit that nobody really saw coming. I agree. Basically, with this, we have this force feedback 
uh, this next gen haptics. That's right, yeah. So the developer in a game can adjust how it feels to press the trigger. So in Call of Duty, you've got to really press it down to fire a gun, which you may hate. Does that, does that feel vary between weapons as well? Uh, that's a great question. So far, I don't think it does. Oh, right, okay. You think a, a rocket launcher would take a bigger one, <laughs> uh, but it just makes you feel like you're really in it. For me, I would go PS5. Uh, yeah. Just because I like the games more, I think. And also, if you do have a gaming PC, then most Xbox exclusives will also be on Windows. Yeah. Which is kind of negates your need to have an Xbox to some extent. I mean, you do have Game Pass on the Xbox as yes, well. Yes, you do. Uh, which I, is actually a cheaper way of getting it. It, it is. It's because you don't have the outlay of, of a $70 game. <laughs> you actually have a real real child. So here we are uh, recommending something that you may, may not be able to buy in time <laughs> Again. the holiday season. <laughs> a second time. And not for the last time. Not for the last time either. Last thing on the consoles, though, is that I think we would recommend avoiding the digital edition of the PS5 and also the Xbox Series S because it doesn't have the disk drive. That's right, yeah. And it just means you have to buy all your games through the digital store, through the Play Store, whatever it is. Um, so you're playing playing top dollar every time. You can't trade your games in. Yeah, and, 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 and I was gonna say, if you trade your games in, that'll quickly erode the difference in price. Absolutely. Because if you bought Watch Dogs or Assassin's Creed, yeah. you're probably not going to want to keep that for long. So, yeah. By the full fat version, I think. <laughs> Why am I in here again? Uh, yeah, you might want to turn it on as well. Otherwise, it's just in the in the dark. I'm just looking at darkness. This is a, an Oculus Quest 2. Here's the box. Um, you can take that off now if you want, Tom. Uh, a refinement of the Quest 1 that came out a couple of years ago, um, uh, which is a great headset, actually. It was, yeah. Uh, and I had one of those, and I've just upgraded to this one. Um, so the big deal here is this is a standalone VR headset. So you don't have to have a PC to plug it into. That's no great. cables. No cables. So you can walk around in 3D space. And the games are all run internally. So um, you buy the games on here, you play the games on here. They come with a couple of controllers here. These are the... Uh, controllers i like this they feel the same as the rift s and the rift yeah they're a little bit chunkier than before um they're, they're great and actually you can use your hands as well uh, in vr oh, so even without tracks your, yeah without these oh, so you cool. can just track your hands and you interact by pinching your thumb and forefinger and moving things around what's the game situation because unlike a pc hooked up one so i have the oculus rift s which is mm. the sort of high-end oculus still cable still plug into your pc and i can play all my steam games and stuff yeah, so you can you can do that with this as well. You can plug it into your PC. It is via a USB connection as opposed to an HDMI. Okay. So there's sort of compression that goes on there. So it's not quite as pure an image. But you as, can play full fat PC games. But you can, yeah. So this doubles up as a, as a PC headset as well. Okay, so that's awesome. why it's quite uh, mm -hmm. versatile. There's nothing else really that competes with this because um, the ecosystem that's part of this is far and away mm -hmm. you've got the most games for a standalone headset. It is Facebook owned, so they're throwing a lot. Not of Not everyone loves this. that Facebook integration. No, and that gets me onto the to the, the bad points because you have to log in with your Facebook account in order. Mm -hmm. to, you have to link it with your Oculus account, which wasn't the case before. So essentially, you have to give your data to Facebook, and a lot of people are not very happy about that, um, which I completely understand. I mean, I have this for testing purposes, so it's just a necessary evil. I suppose. <laughs> Facebook, a necessary <laughs> evil. <laughs> that works. I should say this is actually cheaper than the uh, Quest 1. The Quest 1 was 399 This is 299 That's a big difference. I so thought the original Quest was too expensive. Yes. Uh, That's yeah, much better. It is, but they, in order to cut costs, they've actually, they've this head strap, for example, isn't very comfortable. It's, it's a cheap, cheap bit of material um, i love this thing i think it's a, a great gift idea again mid, mid, middle of the road <laughs> pricing you know two two was it 300 uh so yeah it's two two nine nine pounds uh that's six for a 64 gig one mm -hmm. and i think it's 399 for a 256 gig one if, if you want the storage if you want to put some movies on there okay great so let's talk about something a little bit cheaper because so far we've been on the higher end this is a gift is a strong word but it's a tile so i actually i've actually been using these for a couple of years this is the new Tile Pro. This little thing will cost you about 30 pounds, or you can get the smaller Mates 2 for about 25. And it's basically, <laughs> basically, didn't think it'd be that loud, um, <clears throat> just like a way of tracking things. So you could put this on your keys, you could keep it in your backpack, your luggage, your wallet. I've got one, almost all of those actually. And then through the app on iPhone or Android, you can then track it. If you lose your keys, you can beep it, you can ring it from your phone, and then it will go off and you can find stuff. Not too expensive. I actually bought my wife this for Christmas last year, so a little bonus so gift. So romantic. So romance isn't dead, but just cause you know, it helps you stop, helps you stop losing things and then- Like your wife. Like, yeah, I've got one on her at all times. I know where she, where she is, but definitely a nice little uh, stocking filler as they say. Okay, what's next? What's next? I reckon we should talk about Philips U. 
Philips Hue is a bit like any smart home stuff. It's a bit of an addiction because as soon as you get one, you think, oh, this other room isn't automated, so I better get some more things to automate that. And it just goes in the... I must be up to 30 odd light bulbs. I thought you were going to say it's a bit like crack, but <laughs> maybe it is. It's tech crack. <laughs> so you guys are probably familiar with Philips Hue, smart lights, smart bulbs, nothing really new there. Uh, this is one of their uh, Go lamps. We've also got this Hue set up behind me. We've got light strips, we've got a couple of bulbs. Um, but one of the new things from uh, the good people at Philips, uh, where is it? This guy. This is the Philips Hue Gradient light strip. And it's kind of like a next gen version of the light strip, which we have behind this desk. And this is meant for your TV. So can you guess how much this, is, this costs? Is it 120? This starts from 150. And then you need the Hue Sync box, which is 230. And you need the Philips Hue Bridge, which is about 35. Is it too late to change this buying guide recommendation? I, there's nothing that does this quite as well. I've hooked it up to my TV at home, and it's a 75 inch model. There's a 55 inch version of this as well. And it just goes around the edge with the Sync box. Then you connect it to your games console, your satellite box, TV box and then it basically can read what's on screen and then project those colors out of those corners. Nothing crazy new there. Philips Ambilight TVs have been doing that for a long time, but this is just like a way of adding it to any TV, essentially. It's very expensive. You have to use the HuSync box, which is a bit of a pain. You have to plug all your cables in. It won't work with any of your smart TV apps because it has to be through an HDMI input. So I have to now play, say, Netflix through my PS4 or PS5 rather than through my actual smart TV to get the effects. But when it does work and when you have set it up, <laughs> at the end of the day, it does look quite cool. Would I recommend it? Only if you've got money to burn and you love Philips Hue. Otherwise, I think that's just a bit of a luxury. I do like these kind of bulbs and yeah. just general smart lights. Start with a bridge, start with a couple of bulbs, maybe just expand it over time. Yeah, um, the only thing I would say is that with the color bulbs that you get, they are fun for a little while, but I think most people probably just use them in their standard settings, yeah. you know, warm light, after warm orangey while. light. So, yeah. so the I think the, the the best bulbs I've, I've found are the are the, um, just the hue, white. hue amb ambient. Oh white, yes, much cheaper. White ambience, yeah, which are cheaper than the color uh, yes. bulbs. I like these. You can go crazy with how much you want to spend. You can just go over the top with these sort of things. Uh, which is fun, but I wouldn't really recommend for the value. Um, but I think Philips Hue is quite a nice gift idea. The, the Hugo is um, still quite expensive, but you often find them on deals, especially around Black like Friday. Yes. Uh, it tends to be when I buy my bulbs. I've never <laughs> ever bought one full price. <laughs> what exciting lives we live, buying bulbs. Yeah. Now I see behind this iPad, you have a graphics card. I do. This is an NVIDIA GeForce 3070. Mm -hmm. Uh, RTX 3070. You can't get many of these. Like As usual, you can't buy these things. The 30 series, the new uh, AMD RX uh, 6800, uh, 6800 XT, you just, they're just, they're sold out because- The demand is so The demand huge. is so high. Yeah. Because they're really good. Yeah. Um, so if you can get hold of these, now I'm not thinking this is necessarily a gift. This is even if you just want to get it for yourself. Mm -hmm. For a gaming PC, uh, a 30 series, something like if you're playing at uh, 1080p, 1440, something like the, the 3070 is fine or any forthcoming lower end cards. Plus one of AMD's uh, 5000, That's a 5, good combo. series, the, the 5600X. It's brilliant. It blows everything out of the water. It's just, it's so good Com compared to the last generation, including all of the top end Intel stuff. It's it's really good and it's much cheaper than that as well. So if you want a quick gaming PC, one of those, one of these, if maybe, you can get it. maybe the AMD one, if you can get it, that yep. is, uh, it's definitely a good time to, to build a PC because it isn't always a good time to build a PC because it's usually something always else something coming, corner. but yeah. now is a great time. Now is a great time. AMD it's chip fun. with an NVIDIA or AMD oh, graphics. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I don't really. All right, Tom, even I'm getting bored now. <laughs> Just do quick ones. What's well, next? <laughs> I invited you on here. All right. Uh, a couple of quick last ones. Uh, this is the new Chromecast, the uh, one with Google TV. This has just come out, about £60. It kind of sits between the normal Chromecast, it's above that, but below the Chromecast Ultra, so this can't stream games. This does not support Stadia. I don't think anyone's that bothered about that necessarily. It surprises me. It feels like Google's already given up on it, doesn't it? And why not support Stadia? Anyway, this is basically your dongle. You can plug into any TV and you get apps like Netflix, Amazon, HBO, Disney Plus, and it also has a little remote with it. It can stream 4K HDR with Dolby Vision, although of course your TV will also need to support that. You're probably thinking, where, when would I use this? It's still a little bit tricky because if you have a modern TV, 
probably a smart apps on it will do most of those anyway. I think it's for reasonably modern TVs, perhaps 4K TVs, but the app situation isn't so good. You have some more budget TVs where the apps don't support 4K, for example, then you could get through that. Maybe if you're traveling, plug this into a TV. That's what I do. I take it with me, plug it in. It's already logged into all of your right. streaming apps. So you so just have to log into the Wi-Fi and it will work. I think that's one of the biggest uses for this. Although you may need to use a power connector as well. It doesn't always get all the power it needs through the uh, HDMI or USB on the TV itself. But a good little travel thing. £60, nice and cheap. Of course, there are lots of alternatives. Roku, Fire Stick 4Ks, which are a little bit cheaper than this. Uh, but if you like the Google ecosystem, you want this nice remote. Uh, then the Google Chromecast with Google TV is a pretty nice, actually, I'm going to say affordable gift. Call that quick. <laughs> yeah, that, that, was, that certainly wasn't quick. And I think last of all, video games. Yes. Right? Yeah. Everyone loves a video game and there's a whole bunch of them out. What are you playing? Uh, at the moment, I'm playing a really, uh, well, it's, it's sort of a, I think it's an indie title on the PC called Satisfactory, where you build a factory and you can do it co-op and you just sort of... I've never even heard of that. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, I know, I know. It's not a mainstream game, but it's 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 great fun and you, you just sort of build a factory and it, and it has, you have to sort of, you have to try and make it as efficient as you can. Efficiency that just turns me on, all right? Oh, that's, 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 that's the title there. <laughs> learn something new about your brother every day <laughs> so you're playing Satisfactory I'm trying a bit of Spider-Man on PS5 Spider-Man is great on it looks fantastic also got Black Ops Assassin's Creed Valhalla Watch Dogs Legion and of course the big one coming soon Cyberpunk 2077 I think if your husband your wife your partner your girlfriend wants a video game for Christmas if they haven't already ordered it chances are Cyberpunk is going to be the game to buy this year or this decade, They're to be honest. Into the, yeah, into next year yeah. as well. Yeah. So I think that would be the one to go for. What would be your one? If you could pick one device from everything here, what would you take away? Everything else goes in the bin. I'd have you with Sony A7S III because it looks really nice. It's because you know how much it costs. <laughs> yeah, well. that's right. <laughs> I, fair enough. We haven't got time for that one. Uh, actually, if I had to pick anything here, if, if, it, was, if it was for me or, I, or someone I really, really liked, it would have to be the MacBook uh, M1 because yep. I think that it's, so, it's such a step change. It's such a big deal uh, in performance and battery life that PCs are going to take a while to catch up with that. I agree. And it's money well spent. For me, because I'm a bit more fun and it's Christmas time-ish, I'm on the PS5. But what do you think? Which one would you go for out of all these? And if we've missed out any great gift ideas, let us know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching, guys. If you did enjoy the video, which presumably if you've watched it till this point, you probably have, uh, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. See more of me. If you want to see more of Pete, let us know in the comments as well. And we'll catch you next time right here on Tech Chap. Tech Chaps. Tech, tech Chap. Just the one. <laughs>